Hey, what's up guys? Fossex7 here with another LMS2 video. And today I have a different kind of video for you guys. Um, I'm going to be answering for you guys' comments and some questions that aren't quite necessary for a full length video on. So I'm going to be doing that and as well as informing you guys of what I've been working on lately and what's coming up. So let's get started. So first question by Fury325Club. Can you make a tutorial on how to take the logo off the trains? So let's go ahead and do that now. So as you guys know, for the regular version of limits, there's a watermark in all the trains and you can't take it off unless you get the pro version. So if you guys want to take it off, I'm going to show you guys how to do that now. So go ahead and go to Google or any kind of browser you guys use. Go ahead and download the texture that you want based on any color or any kind of any texture. Let's go ahead and make a new coaster real quick. Let's call it tutorial or whatever. There we go. And let's go to coaster properties, style and new. And let's go ahead and make the coaster. So let's go ahead and click a few times here and type separators here and make this a station. There we go. All right, now once you've done that, now if you want to get this to take, if you want to take the watermark off, it's pretty simple. So make sure you download that texture. Go ahead and copy the texture inside your park directory or your park file. So that's in combat null Mr. Coaster. Then locate your file with of your name of your park and just copy that in there and go to coaster. Actually, let's go to un unfreeze, okay? So let's go to coaster, there we go, coaster properties, go to trains, and then go to color setup. And you'll see down here, it says car texture one and car texture two. So I have, I just put in a random steel uh, picture here. So I'll click that. And for the second one, go ahead and do the same thing. And press okay and okay, and then freeze. All right, there we go. Now you can see that the car texture is in fact gone. And basically the texture that you uploaded will replace the color texture. So you can't change the color after this. So once you do that, it will replace, I think you can change the color of the bogey and the seats and everything. It's just not the actual car itself. And go ahead and unfreeze that. And I'll show you guys that it, it, it does in fact have a watermark on it. So if I go to color setup and just go ahead and delete these two and then press okay. And then freeze it again. Here you can see it does have a watermark and it's back. So there you go. So here's a quick tutorial on how to make the watermark disappear. So let's go ahead and move on to the next question. So Vegan Massacre asks, have you figured out how to put video screens in the limits to yet? So I've had this question from a few people and I have not figured out how to do it just yet. I am still working on it with the scripting. I've seen people do it before, so I know it's possible, um, but that takes some time for me to figure out. And I'm not the all stuff out of no limits to try to stay away from but i'm going to be pursuing this pretty soon so i can make a cool tutorial for you guys and uh yeah so move on to the next question no limits projects asks can you show us how to make map textures realistically all right so let's get started so if you guys want to have your own custom textures just like the coaster here go ahead and locate in your browser a texture that you would like so say if you want a custom concrete texture custom gravel texture custom dirt texture just do that and go ahead and copy it into your park directory once again. Then go to terrain and then go to terrain settings here. So let's unfreeze the coaster. Let's go to terrain settings. Now here you can you'll see you can have uh, two different types. So here stock would be grass. Now you go ahead and press the plus button, add a new layer here. Then go to settings and go ahead and select a texture that you guys like to use. So say for instance you want to use your concrete texture, go ahead and use that. I'm just using the stock dirt texture here. That's basically just the number that defines the amount of times um, in a space that the texture will repeat. So A, which is the stock, which it already is when you first load it up. Let's go ahead and test that out. This is the one that most people don't know about. And you'll see a lot of people that don't know too much about no limits to use this texture. Now you can use it by choice. It depends on your texture really, but uh, let's go ahead and paint layer here. And I'll show you guys what A it is. So if we go ahead and select new layer here, and you can see that it doesn't look too good here. So it's pretty uh, spread out, obviously. And that's kind of what the first texture uh, settings do. So if you want to have a more composed texture, go ahead and go to train settings. And this is the one I use most of the time. And let's go to B. Now you can see the values are a lot different um, in the numbers. So let's go to B here and press OK. And let's go ahead and paint layer. You can see the difference right away that it is much smaller and you can see it does repeat a lot more and uh, that that really is a difference so you guys can go through that those settings there and it really depends on your texture like a lot so if your texture has these weird edges to them as you can see these bumps here then that's when you'll see that problem now if the texture is completely flat and is perfect on all sides and it doesn't have any inconsistencies then you'll see it 
lay out perfectly, which in that case it won't matter whatever value it is. So <clears throat> that all depends on your texture. So let's go back into train settings here. And you can see that the deep detail map and the bump map, basically what that does is that you load up the same texture or a different texture that you want to allow your texture to stand out a little bit more. So same as you have a gravel texture and you, the gravel has all the rocks and stuff you want them to pop out a little bit more. So you can add a detail map or a bump map, which is, that's what that does, is uh, allows the, the, the gravel to pop out more. Now it really just depends on the texture. Sometimes it, it can look terrible. Sometimes it can look good. So you just gotta play around with it. And, uh, and with the auto paint is basically what the grass is here. You supply auto paint and it will automatically fill the entire terrain with your auto painted texture. So let's move on to the next question. Devin Tate says, great videos. Maybe you can do a tutorial on how to make realistic transfers slash storage. So yes, I will make a tutorial on that pretty soon here. I've done the transfer storage on my BNM Invert Thor. Um, I'll be doing a tutorial on how I did that. It's actually not too difficult once you get the, get the hang of it. So um, yeah, I'll be doing that pretty soon here. Uh, expect a video in a few days. And uh, yeah, so let's move on to the next question. Jacob Gway asks, can you make a video on how to make shade coverings in Q-Lines and how to make nice looking paths for my park? So yeah, let's get started on that now. So go to supports, now an easy way to make paths, which is what I use. Um, go to free node and you go and lay out the, the nodes that you want for your path here. Oops, there we go. Let's move that up here. All right, now you have your path here. Now this, basically what these nodes do is that's where your path is going to go. So you lay out the, your, your path that you want with your nodes first. Then go ahead and highlight the nodes. And make sure that they are just above the ground. So let's go to them and let's page down. So just about a foot or two above the ground, just like that. Now if you want a more concrete looking path, which is not going to look concrete, it's going to look metal, but aesthetically kind of like concrete, I guess. <laughs> so go to add a beam. You don't, you don't want to use a custom uh, box beam for the concrete. Make some kind of concrete or asphalt gray. And if you want a wood path, you can go ahead and select the custom wood beam. Go to custom color, select this brown here. And let's make the width seven, which will automatically go to 6.5, which is the maximum. And let's make the height two for now. Now if your train is uneven, make the height a, a little bit higher. So make it like four or five because you don't want the path dipping under the grass or whatever terrain you have. So uh, if your train's flat like this, two is fine. You can also adjust the nodes, you can lower them. But um, I tend to keep the paths all flat because it's just nicer. It doesn't look all sloppy. So make sure you have horizontal beam and zero and zero, start at the end. And then go ahead and go to top view and connect the paths. Just like that. All right, let's go ahead and freeze it. All right, there we go. So you have a pretty simple path. They look pretty nice. You guys can change the colors and also the wear on the path. So you go ahead and make a new file, you can change this to really worn. So if you want really beat up looking wood paths, you guys can do that. And also, if you guys want to see more of wood plank paths, like piers and stuff, go ahead and let me know because I can make a tutorial on that. Yeah, I'm just telling you guys now, it will be pretty tedious making that yourself, but it will be worth it in the end. So uh, yeah, so let's get on to the next question. No Limits Coastal World asks, how to make RMC or Raptor Track tutorials? So. I will be doing a tutorial on that pretty soon here, maybe a few days, and uh, it won't be using supports, unfortunately, <laughs> but there is a light pattern editor in the game I will be using to make the, the track, so it will still be in game, it's not 3D mild or anything like that, um, but uh, yeah, so I, I believe there are tutorials already out there on this, but I'm just going to do my own spin on, on the tutorial and uh, go ahead and make one for you guys pretty soon, so stay tuned for that. Next question. Liam Wright asks, can you do a tutorial on how to make RMC? I think you're asking about how to make RMC track. Now, once again, I believe there are tutorials already out online on how to make that. I will make a tutorial pretty soon, maybe next week, on how to make the track. And uh, maybe how to even style an RMC coaster. I made a few myself. A few of them I haven't released yet. But um, yeah, I've been playing around with that for a while. So we'll see you on that. And uh, next question. Faisal3321 asks, how to make coaster signs. So let's go ahead and start that now. So coaster signs are pretty easy. It depends on what kind of design you're going for. If you want a really, really, really flush look to them, like you have to use a lot of nodes for, to make the letters look pretty perfect. But um, I'm just gonna show you guys how to make the generic simple signs that everyone can do uh, for all the coasters. So let's get started here. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a Terran sign. So let's go to unfreeze, let's go to supports. 
Add a free node and let's go to front view. Now, the key thing with this is keeping it balanced. So you want to measure out the size of the sign that you want. So I'm going to go ahead and use a full 10 by 10 square here. This is on a one foot grid. And I'm going to use nine or eight of the 10 squares for each letter. So for the T, I'm going to start here in the middle and go to this end here. Just like so, but that's the T. Now make sure you skip one square on each one. Now for the A, let's go ahead and start in the middle here. And I usually for the A's I add two nodes on the bottom here because if I just went just across like this, then the uh, beam on the bottom would be out of slant. So I want to kind of match the rest of the letter design. So I add a little uh, node to keep the beam on the bottom at a right angle. And so I'm do the same thing for this side. So skip one square in and let's go ahead and Kind of measure this out in the middle and add two nodes in here. There we go. Now for the R, let's go ahead and make the R now. So start up here, one down there, and let's go about to here and start drawing across, down, and there we go. That might be too big, so I'm gonna scoot that up a little bit. And add one parallel to this piece here. And let's go ahead and add, R is gonna be a little bit shorter here, so Kind of move this up, kind of keep it adjusting it as you needed it. <clears throat> Let's move that piece up. Let's add a warmer node in here. There we go. And let's move that in. All right, that looks good for an R. So let's go ahead and make the O. So for the O, let's just go ahead and add two up here, two on the bottom, one on the sides, one of the sides, and we're done. And for the ends, ends are pretty easy. So let's go ahead and add one up here, one down here, and one over here, and one up here. All right, so we have Terra on here. So this is the layout for the sign. Now you can add a lot more nodes to this if you want it to be a lot more uh, accurate to actual text. So let's go ahead and go to Add Beam, Support Panel, Custom Color, we can keep that. And let's go to Custom Box Beam here, oops. And let's make the width one and one to keep it simple and zero and zero. Now for this part, it gets kind of tricky. So you want to tell yourself if it's a horizontal beam or if it's a vertical beam. Now the vertical beams I only usually do for the purely vertical beam. So that's like for this T here and for this little parts on the A's and for the horizontal beam, I usually do that for everything else. So that usually works. That's usually the general rule here for me that I go by. So basically all that tells you tells the game is uh, the rotation angle, so what it should be rotating. Now, if you have a vertical beam and you pull it on a horizontal beam, the rotation angle is going to be all weird. So that's basically what it is. It kind of it kind of um, gives it a default for the rotation angle. So let's go ahead and start now. So this is a horizontal beam. So let's go ahead and add all the horizontal beams first. So add this one across here, A across there. Let's go ahead and do these ones here, and all of these. All right, and we can just do the last one on the end here. All right, then go ahead and adjust this R a little bit. It looks kind of weird. All right, that's, that looks worse. <laughs> All right, so let's fix that. All right, so now let's do the vertical beams now. So let's go to supports, vertical beam. And let's go ahead and add them in here. And one right here. There we go. Add that one up. Oops, forgot that one. That one might be wrong, we'll see in the future. Alright, and let's finish these off. Alright, there we go. There's one more right here. Okay, so let's go to perspective and see what it looks like. So now you can see this is a way off. I should have checked that. So to fix this, let's go to top view and highlight the nodes that are off here. So it's these back ones and it's moving forward. So let's go ahead and move these forward. There we go. And these ones need to be moved back just a tiny bit. And there we go. So freeze that. All right, so you can see these are the letters. Now the A can be moved up a little bit at the top. These can be moved over a little bit, but uh, these are the general kind of design for the letters you guys can use. Now um, I can actually fix this end up a little bit. I'm actually gonna show you guys a better end. So this that's just a simple one. Um, let me show you guys a better one. So if you delete these real quick, you go to supports and add a node right in here, just like that. That's pretty simple. And go to supports, let's do vertical beam first. Move that in just like that. And let's do horizontal. There we go. And connect these two. 
and connect them across. There we go. And let's go ahead and move this entire thing in. There we go. Move all of these in. And let's move these in. Move this up one. There we go. And move it over. All right, there we go. Let's see what that looks like now. And freeze. All right, same problem as earlier. So we need to adjust these nodes real quick. And we're done here. So I'll move those forward. There we go. And freeze. All right, so you can also adjust that a little bit later, but that's good for now. So uh, yeah, so here's how to make the simple letters. And I will be adding maybe a uh, alphabet inside the support senior pack that's coming out pretty soon here for the version two or update two. And um, let me know if you guys want that or not. I could add it in the same file so you guys can just import the entire alphabet into your park and just copy and paste all the letters that you want. Or I can make a separate file for each letter in different fonts and stuff. And you guys can just extract each letter as you want it. But just let me know in the comments of what you guys would like to see or which one you guys like to see. And uh, yeah, so let's move on to the next question. Coaster Hero 99 asks, can you make a tutorial on how to build intimate shadow supports? So yes, I will be doing that. I'm pretty excited about this one. Um, I will be doing a full fledged uh, video on how to make the entire towers as well as maybe the elevator. And um, yeah, so I'm pretty excited about that one. I haven't seen anyone really do a tutorial on anything about how to do those. So I've only made, uh, I think two of them ever. <laughs> Um, one of my King the Car recreation that is, I still have somewhere in the file somewhere and um, a small stealth light coaster. So I will be doing that and uh, yeah, so expect that pretty soon. Next question. Coaster Enthusiast NY asked, can you show us how to build a big beautiful wall? <laughs> Alright, so to make walls in, in here is pretty simple. I usually keep it um, five feet by, you'll see. Okay, so let's go to unfreeze. And if you build walls like on my, like I built the facades on my Batman coaster, that's all been out of these walls I'm gonna show you guys now. So let's go to supports, add a free node, and go ahead and measure out five feet. So let's go ahead and do five feet, there we go, just like this. All right, now once you have all your nodes spaced out five feet across, you can go ahead and define copy that. So add define paste, there we go. And line it up somewhere on any line. And now the reason why we do five feet across or five, five feet of space on each one is that so we can have, when we add the supports, they'll fit flush with each support. So they wouldn't be overlapping and there wouldn't be any gaps. So if you go to support panel, let's go to custom color. Let's make it this gray right here. And let's go to box beam and let's make it one foot width and the height needs to be five feet. So whatever you make the distance between the nodes here, go ahead and make that exactly the height of the of the uh, beam here. So let's go ahead and add the beam. So add them all the way across on all of them. All right, now once that's done, you guys can go ahead and adjust the wall to any size you want. You can also uh, use different angles by copy and pasting and adjusting the length. So adjust the length is pretty obvious. Just pull these nodes across and line it up somewhere. There we go. And let's go to the perspective and freeze it. All right, and there we go. So you guys can change the texture of the wall too if you just make a new file. Go to Coast Properties, go to Style, and change that to New, or Worn, or Rusted, whatever you want. And uh, yeah, so uh, that's how you make big, beautiful walls. <laughs> and uh, you guys can uh, add whatever you want to them. I might actually throw my facades that I made for Batman also in my sports training pack. So thumbs up if you guys want to see that in there. And uh, yeah, so let's move on to the next question. Lance Hutch asks, how do you change it from meters to feet? Now I get this question a lot, obviously because I do all my tutorials in feet and a lot of you guys uh, work in meters. So to change this, go ahead and go to setup right when you open up the game on the home screen and click the others tab. Now in the others tab, you'll see all your settings. You can change them there. And uh, yeah, so hopefully that helped. And next question. Question here, Golden Snake one asks, how to make realistic arrow supports? Now for this, I'll be doing a full tutorial on this as well. I will be doing a, uh, bo a boomerang coaster and be doing custom supports for the loop as well as the uh, the lift and for the cobra roll too. So yeah, so stay tuned for that. I'll be doing that entire tutorial probably next week and because I got a few people asking for questions on, on how to do that too. Also the custom supports for the loop as you see on boomerang coasters. So yeah, so a few more things here. 
if you guys want to change um, a few questions people had for the supports on coasters, so if say for you had you already finished building your coaster and you wanted you forgot to change the footers. Now you want to change all the footers all at once. You don't want to go through and click each one. So if you unfreeze the coaster, go. I'm just gonna add a bunch of footers here. All right, so you already added all your footers and you want to change them all at once. It's pretty simple. Now this works only with footers. Now if you try to do this with supports, it's not gonna work. So this is a cool little tip for you guys to do it with uh, just footers here. So let's go ahead and hide the whole thing. And you go to support panel. Now you can change all the footer settings right down here. So if you want to change the height, change the two feet and change from the square, which is obviously the stock and just make it round and close that out. And when you freeze it, you will have your footers all changed all at once. So Sabrin's on wood coasters, you want to change the footers there. Steel coasters, same thing. All right, and one last tip for you guys, for me. Um, if you guys want to add your own customer supports and you have your track here, so I'm just going to spam a track right really quick. All right, there we go. And Sabrin's, I want to have my own customer supports on this track, right? And I don't want to, now the standard way of people doing it is going to a support panel and going to rail connector and then going to here, top view, and then clicking in here and then lining up all the footers. I never do that. <laughs> I think that's just a waste of time. An easier way to do that is going to the prefab panel, choose prefab, and just select whatever you want for the prefab. So I'm just gonna do this for right now. All right, there we go. So add prefab, go ahead and click it in. So click in all the supports, wherever you want them. And hide the entire coaster once you've done that on sections that you just want the normal supports on. If you want to do your own custom supports, I just do your own custom supports, a lot easier that way. And I mean, I'm talking about like for like custom supports that aren't like standard kind of angles like these ones. So like your own custom supports for Sabreson X2, the little part that goes over the queue line, that kind of stuff. So let's hide the whole thing once you've done that and let's go to atomize prefab. So atomize that. And there you go, so now you're set. Now you can adjust each one the way you want. You can change the settings on all of them. And uh, yeah, so that's that way you don't have to keep on adding each rail node yourself and lining up the footers. This is just a lot easier to do it this way. A lot faster, it saves you time. And because uh, No Limits is a pretty time consuming game. So uh, yeah, so that's the last one for today, guys. Um, a few more things. I have been working on the Iron Man coaster, so that should be coming out in a few weeks here. That takes, that's that's, that's going to be pretty big, so I've been putting a lot of time into that, as well as the update 2 for the Sports Senior Pack. If you guys want to see anything else in the Sports Senior Pack, let me know in the comments, because I can still make it before I release it. Uh, I think it's going to be released by Thursday, so stay tuned for that, and for all the updates that people wanted. And um, what else have I been working on? Oh yeah, i also been working on a Jurassic Park ride, I haven't shown you guys anything on that, um, but uh, that should be coming out soon. And let me know if you guys want me to do a superhero sets of coasters or Avengers. And also, as my last tutorial, let me know if you guys want to see more tutorials or more coasters. Because I'm trying to get a balance between this and my real life with college and stuff. So, coasters do take a long time. But the problem with that is that I can't make videos while I'm making coasters. Unless, unless you guys want to see like time lapse videos or anything like that. So, let me know. I can actually just record me building and just time lapse the entire thing. So once I release it, I can go ahead and release the time lapses in series or release the time lapses and then release the coasters. So, so let me know which one you guys would like to see. And uh, yeah, so with that, I'll see you guys in the next one and subscribe and like for more. So you find your way back home.